Oh, just imagine what Marvin could have done with these. Not the most versatile piece of equipment out there, bulldozers are usually offered with very limited attachment options. But some companies out there specialize in producing some of the coolest optional dozer tools, starting with this one. Company Dixie Holdings from Queensland, Australia, is known for designing and manufacturing crazy stick rakes, all fabricated entirely out of high tensile bisalloy steel. They also offer cutter bars and dozer protections. This is the Viking Power Dozer, a crazy attachment with a conveyor action system that permits simultaneous loading and unloading of material. It's also used in military applications for horizontal construction, as well as combat engineering tasks. Company Craig, out of New Brunswick in Canada, offers custom sidewall wood chip blades designed to move large amounts of wood chips over a long distance without leaving windrows. The firm also designs heavy-duty U-blades. Sometimes Caterpillar makes a boo-boo. That was one of them. In 2009, American giant Caterpillar announced the upcoming production of vocational trucks. Two years later, the brand launched the CT660 in collaboration with Navistar for the product's design and build. Caterpillar's offering then expanded to a full lineup of trucks, but the yellow brand quickly faced backlash from customers who were reporting major engine problems, bad cab design, poor traction, as well as global dependability issues. But well decided to move forward in this competitive business, CAT announced in 2015 it would soon start producing its vocational truck products at the Caterpillar plant in Victoria, Texas. But that was before a major twist happened. In 2016, Caterpillar announced the end of its on-highway trucks and specified it would require too much capital to develop new products. Truth is, between 2011 and 2016, CAT only sold 1,000 trucks annually. If you still tell me JD sucks after this, I'll p on your John Deere's 9RX is a four-track tractor rated at 640 horsepower. The perfect tool to beat world records as attempted in September 2023 on a farm near the town of Slatina in Romania. Equipped with a Bednar Swifter Disc XE 18400, the 9RX was trying to beat an old world record established in 2007 set at 25.4 hectares cultivated in 24 hours. Working at a depth of 2.75 inches, the 9RX successfully beat the old Prues by 125 hectares, setting the new record at 769.36 hectares. But wait for the following numbers. Over the 24 hours, the John Deere tractor traveled 279 miles and consumed a total of 622 gallons of diesel. The tractor stopped for just 24 minutes for a change of drivers. So I asked ChatGPT to name me the four worst tractors ever. Guess what it said? As number four, the sometimes not so intelligent intelligence names the whole Case 91 series and mentions criticism for, quote, their complex hydraulic systems and frequent hydraulic leaks. What's your take on this? Number three, GPT names the Alice Chalmers Model WC, a machine that, quote, earned a reputation for being underpowered and prone to mechanical failures. It also mentions weak engine and transmission designs. Rank number two is the Fiat 8066 DT tractor from the 1980s. The AI tool backs that statement by claiming poor build quality and goes further by naming it, quote, one of the least reliable tractors of its time. And the worst of the worst is the Fordson County series of tractors produced in the 70s and 80s. Mechanical failures led to, quote, tarnished reputation for the brand and decreased customer confidence. Would you agree? So who had a chance to see Big Roy in real life? Nicknamed Big Roy, the versatile 1080 is a giant tractor built in 1977 in Canada. While some think it was aimed at the Australian market, others think it was most likely built to compete with other manufacturers' giants. Named after the company's president, Roy Robinson, Big Roy sits on four axles and is powered by a Cummins diesel engine that generates 600 horsepower. It carries a 550-gallon fuel tank located ahead of the cab. The tractor is over 30 feet long, 11 feet high, and weighs over 30 tons when ballasted for field operations. A 9-inch TV monitor is installed in the dash to allow vision to the rear. 
cutting edge technology back then, huh? Pure concept, Big Roy was donated to Manitoba Agricultural Museum in the 1980s, and in 2016, the tractor was brought back to the versatile factory and was completely restored to celebrate its 50th anniversary. So what do you think of Oliver's first turbocharged tractor? In 1967, farm equipment manufacturer Oliver released the 1950T as a replacement to the 1950 tractor, introduced to market in 1964. Today, the machine is seen as a great piece of history. Unlike the former 1950, which was powered by a GM diesel engine, the brand new 1950T featured a well-proven turbocharged power plant built and designed as a joint venture between Oliver and Waukesha. Rated as a 7.8 plow tractor, the 1950T developed 105 horsepower. The new engine option allowed Oliver to decrease their prices from 11 grand for a 1950 to $9,900 for the T model. In 1969, the 1950T was officially discontinued, but its legacy remained intact. The tractor is still seen today as a pure workhorse ahead of its time, which featured all the comforts of a modern tractor. Yep, this thing was twice as fast as a D8. The Vickers VR 180 Vigor was a British crawler tractor produced between 1951 and 1958 by Vickers Armstrongs, known as one of Britain's most prominent armaments firms. And that thing was built like a tank. The 180 Vigor's suspension was designed with considerable articulation, allowing high speeds. The machine was capable of nearly 10 miles per hour, while the comparable Caterpillar D8 could only reach 5 miles per hour. Equipped with a six-cylinder supercharged Rolls-Royce engine that developed 190 horsepower, the Vickers VR 180 Vigor was also known for its terrible fuel consumption, averaging close to 10 gallons per hour. Approximately 1,500 units of the 180 were produced over seven years. The design continued until 1961 as the Vickers VR 110 Vicon with a smaller 142 horsepower four-cylinder engine. 